Welcome to Scale Model Workshop and the fourth in my series in reviewing Edwards' coverage of the Hawker Tempest Mark V. In this episode, I'll be taking a brief look at their second release, the Tempest Mark V Series II. In short, there's very little difference between this kit and the first release. This Series II kit includes the drop tanks that, in truth, should have been included in the first release. The small clear tree consists of upper and lower tank halves and fairings. The Tempest drop tanks are rather unique in that the fairings made up of a clear reinforced plastic. The roots of the design can be traced back to the fairing used for the Typhoon tanks. However, both the tank and fairing were given a more aerodynamic design for use with the Tempest, and because of the Tempest's limited range, the tanks were an essential, even for tactical operations. We were using long-range tanks when we were going out on our sorties over Germany and uh, firing at anything that moved. But we would always drop, drop our long-range tanks first before we went into action. Then the AOC came to see us one day and said, the chaps who are making these things back in England, they can't keep up with the rate that you're dropping your tanks. I'm afraid in future you'll have to keep them on. And uh, that all went quiet, actually. And so I said, well, so I'm, uh, I hear what you say, but I've seen some of the chaps going down with flaming uh, tanks. So until so I've caught Martin for it, I shall go on uh, uh, dropping my tanks. The AOC didn't say another word. He swung around the tent pole and just worked out. And I thought, right, if he was as for a court-martial tomorrow speaking to the AOC like that. But he wasn't. And nothing happened, and we went on dropping our tanks. I used a multi-step casting process when I fabricated the tanks for my scratch build Tempest, and I never quite worked out a satisfactory way to simulate the reinforcement bands. But I do prefer a solid clear casting for simulating the thin material used for the real fairing. You'll want to assemble the tank halves first and paint them before fixing the fairing. Edward molded the fairing in a single piece and kept the sides reasonably thin. You should put a little paint on the cross structure to simulate the attachment mechanism. Edward attempted to simulate the fogged surface of the fairing by adding some surface texture. However, they sprued into the texture in three places. It really isn't a loss as the texture wasn't very effective. You would do better to sand down the entire fairing and just polish it out to a dull surface. Edward has provided the reinforcement bands with decals. While they're nicely printed, the stark black will come off as just a solid black stripe. This is a case of a detail that you know should be there, but it's out of reach of such a small scale. I think it would have been better if the decal were printed with a transparent color that could effectively suggest the bands without looking like pinstriping. As an aside, these decals were provided on the sheet in the first release, which further reinforces my belief that the tank should have been included as well. What's glaringly not in the kit is the extended ducting for the radiator. This is clearly rendered in the box illustration and is so commonly seen on many typhoons and tempests. It was not a particularly simple piece to construct when I built my Tempest, and I was looking forward to not having to do it again. Instead, Edward did a bait and switch, choosing to take the easy way out and toss in two little bits of styrene and two additions to the photo etch sheet. These are supposed to simulate the primitive, clunky-looking barn door carburetor filter. The decals are printed by Cartograph, which means they're second to none and hands down my favorite. However, a number of modelers asked me to test out the decals. So using my typical method, I applied the decal onto fairly rough primer to see how well it would lay down. As expected, it performed well with my usual solutions of Microset, 
Microsol, and Solvaset. As you can see, it melted into the surface very well, conforming to all the raised detail and surface texture, showing no signs of silvering. If you're curious about my decal application technique and how to prevent material buildup from unnecessarily gloss coating, check out the video on decals. To sum it up, my assessment of the basic kit is exactly as stated in Part 3. However, the way Edward has chosen to release the Tempest kit is rather dodgy. There's not enough in the Series 2 kit to even remotely waste resources on another box. It should have been one release with wing tanks, carburetor duct filter, and the Phantom Radiator duct extension. In other words, there should have never been a Series 1 release, and they could have taken the extra time to fix the molds so the wing halves would mate up properly and create the radiator duct.